Hello, Artful Manifestors. Thank you for joining me. Today, we are receiving a channeled message from your ancestors. To do this, all you have to do is pick from one of the images or objects. Before we get into the reading, I want to let you know that I'm giving away a free personalized tarot reading. All you have to do to qualify is give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and type Red Moon in the comments below. I'll be announcing the winner on August 19th during the next full moon. All right, so for the first reading, we have this image plus Baltic Amber. And for the second reading, we have this image plus a feather. And for the third reading, we have this image plus a seashell. Let your intuition be your guide. Whichever image and or object you're most drawn to is probably the reading meant for you. Of course, you're always welcome to listen to two or even all three of the readings as there may be additional messages, perhaps even from different ancestors in each reading. You'll find the links to the readings in the description box below. Hello, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. You chose the Baltic Amber. Just want to give you a moment to look at it. Oh, wow. We have uh, bells going up for you. So there's definitely something about this Amber and the message that your ancestors have for you. And amber is something that could be used in healing. And what I'm hearing is that your ancestors really want you to clear your energy, to burn away what no longer serves you. We have this card with the flame and somebody beating a drum. It also looks like feathers, but what they want you to do is to do some kind of energetic healing. You can do this through meditation. You can do this through um, intentional focus, prayer, uh, Reiki healing. And in fact, if you put amber over your sacral chakra, it helps to bring about the Reiki uh, healing energies. It, it encourages the ability to heal others energetically. We can call it Reiki, we can call it something else, um, but using energy, channeling energy, divine energy through yourself to heal other people. Um, putting amber over your sacral chakra will help to encourage that. It's going to help clean your energy. Any residual ties that you may have um, to past relationships, uh, events, places, it's going to help encourage that. Yeah. And um, I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing, but I do see a dog here. So somebody's dog is with you. Definitely see that. And definitely I'm seeing a bird. So your ancestors may appear to you as birds from time to time, especially black birds. I'm hearing, but it could also be hawks or owls or some other kind of bird, depending on where you live. And if you've already begun feather collecting feathers, they are encouraging you to do this. I'm also seeing a turtle. So somebody has a, a turtle shell rattle and your ancestors see you using that. Some of you may come across one. You may either find an empty turtle shell that then you take home and make your own rattle, or you may be somewhere 
where uh, an indigenous person has made a rattle using a turtle shell that you then either purchase or trade for. All right, thank you, ancestors. But it's very clear that they want you to cleanse your energy. It says, awaken your inner shaman, connect, invoke, heal. And so this isn't just about healing yourself, it's definitely about healing others. And I just want you to also look in the flame and see if you see any shapes. They also want you to use fire in a real way to uh, channel and connect with them, with your ancestors and with your spirit guides, but especially your ancestors sitting around a campfire and looking into the campfire, you're gonna see shapes that come out and you're meant to remember what shapes you see. A lot of them will look like animals and then think about um, what traits those animals have and how it relates to your life currently. You can even uh, take a question to the fire and it's a way that your ancestors will communicate with you. So you take a question to the fire, go and sit in front of the fire. Some of you are, again, are gonna see shapes within the fire that look like animals. Then you'll write down or think about the kind of traits that those animals have that will um, be applicable to the question that you have or the behaviors of the animals. So for example, um, a, possum, a possum plays dead, a bat uh, hangs upside down, um, things like this. So it could be, you know, um, in the case of a possum, it could be, you know, don't take any action. In the case of seeing a bat, it could be change your perspective, look at it from another direction, things like that. So you're gonna see shapes. Others of you, you may see shapes, but you're also just going to receive kind of downloads. You're just gonna, you're gonna ask the question and the answer is just gonna kind of pop in your head. Uh, they're telling me that some of you also may use candles looking at just a single flame focusing on that there's something about fire that is connecting you to your ancestors but there's also a message again of using a rattle a drum um, to uh, heal to to shake up the energy to to break the energy they're showing me these energetic cords um, being dissolved being shattered by the vibration of a rattle or a drum all right thank you ancestors love those messages already let's get some oracle cards first i do list all the cards that i use in the description box below and if i have a link as to where you can find them i include that as well all right pile number one the shaman so excited for you did you hear the dog when i said the shaman they validated that wow okay we have a horse all right pile number one your ancestors revered horses i wouldn't use the word worship but i would say honored and revered um they saw them as these magnificent beasts a symbol of power, strength, freedom. And they would sometimes uh, follow them. Um, I'm, for many of you, I'm, I feel that uh, the ancestors that are here are um, ancestors that predated humans riding horses. Uh, they 
they may have actually eaten them. And this would have been 10,000 years ago. I'm even hearing 16,000 years ago. And again, they just really valued, appreciated these horses. Um, and uh, they drew pictures of them. And the message from your ancestors is to um, embrace this energy of a horse, this, this power, this freedom, uh, this kind of wildness. They, they're showing me you being rewilded, um, detaching yourself from certain, not all, but certain societal uh, restrictions. Things in our culture, our society, our communities, our families that may be restricting your movement in some way, shape, or form. All right, let's get some more cards and see what other messages your, your ancestors have for you, pile number one. All right, we have mountains, stand your ground. Yeah, they want you to stand your ground about what you believe, what you feel is right. And, you know, sometimes the message isn't about the little words on the card, but the big words, mountains. I'm actually seeing you visiting mountains. And in particular, some mountains where either there, there still are wild horses that roam those mountains, or they used to. The, the mountain may even be named after horses. So if you live near mountains or if you've been thinking about visiting mountains, they want you to visit this place. It's going to be a spiritual experience for you and you're meant to gather something there that you're going to use in your shamanic practices, in your spiritual practices. It's also um, uh, an energy vortex where it's going to be easier for you to communicate with your ancestors. So if this is a good time for you, uh, this is uh, like weather permitting, this is a good time for you to maybe go camping or glamping, um, but Definitely spending time outdoors, if you can, barefoot or sitting on the actual ground on Mother Earth. Um, if you can, a place where you can build a campfire and really connect with your ancestors. All right. Wow. I'm loving your message. Um, it sounds so fun, uh, but also spiritual. All right. Let's get a card from this deck. And I did a reading a few days ago about making spirituality fun instead of serious. So, all right, the golden children, inner child, tenderness, innocence, rare gifts. All right, so last time, last time we did a reading with your ancestors, uh, one of the messages that came through was that your ancestors were waiting for you, that they had been waiting maybe a thousand years, but now this is much older. This is like 16,000 years. And you are one of these golden children. You're, you are this portal. You have these rare gifts to offer the world. You're meant to uh, 
again, free yourself from something. You being free and authentic and vibrating at your highest is going to open the door for other people to express themselves freely. Wow, love that for you, pile number one. Let's get some tarot cards and see what other messages your ancestors have for you today. What messages does pile number one's ancestors have for them? All right, let's see. We have the seven of pentacles. So growing your growing your income growing your connection to earth and the 6 of pentacles balancing energies balancing the give and take The Three of Pentacles, collaborating, working with others to create something, working together to achieve a common goal. The Moon. All right, see here we see one of the crows in a cage. And then we see a crow in this tree and a silhouette of a crow in the moon. And they're showing me this fish here that looks like a salmon. So there's again there's this idea of some restriction that you're meant to free yourself from perhaps there is some financial restriction that you're experiencing so um it could be uh the job that you have or um maybe you feel like uh you're restricted by your living situations, but you can't afford to move out on your own. Um, some, some connection between finances and freedom. And this is what your ancestors are trying to help you with at this time. Did you hear the birds? Just when I said that, your ancestors are helping you with this at this time. They're the the birds outside may sounds. Okay. Three of swords. So there's again this idea of you healing something. You're meant to heal something. There's you have some wound that maybe is making you feel that. Um, you're not worthy of this financial gain or that you're um, not capable of the freedom that you desire. And that's the wound that they want you to heal. Whatever this wound is, that's it's connected to you feeling trapped or restricted, um, caged. They want you to embrace the power of this horse. All right, the queen of pentacles. So many pentacles. Uh, the queen of pentacles is creative and nurturing. And she's able to transform these creative thoughts into the 3D to channel it 
and ground it into the earthly realm. And the Empress. All right, the Empress is fertile, creative. I feel like the Queen of Pentacles and the Empress are sisters um, as far as energy goes. And the Empress is very um, nurturing. This almost looks like a key, but it's a chalice. It's a chalice in a heart, but it looks like a, a keyhole. So there's something about what you love being the key. Are you, have you been maybe depriving yourself of something or you've felt like you were deprived of something either you're doing it because you feel like you don't deserve it whether it's some kind of self-care or trip or something that you want that you feel like you you don't deserve it or it's a situation that you feel trapped in that you feel like isn't allowing you to have something that you desire but in any case, I see that you're transforming this because here we have the heart that's wounded and here we have the heart that has the sun. It's the glow of the sun around it. It's risen up. It's illuminated. And these look like little flames. We started with fire, so... Again, you're meant to transmute and transform this. And this healing is is going to be key to your resources and your finances. All right, your ancestors want me to remind you that when something happens that is unexpected, um even if it feels like a little bit of a setback, for example, maybe you apply for a job and you don't get it, or you apply for a promotion and you don't get it. Rather than, you know, spiraling down with um, negative thoughts or even saying things out loud, um, Say, even saying things about other people rather than doing that to say let's see what good comes out of this to say this must have happened for a reason the universe is aligning me with the right path and keep repeating these types of positive statements because this is going to help you embody the energy of the queen of pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles is very resourceful. So she's going to know how to, okay, this path is blocked. Uh, I don't have this thing available, this resource available, then I'm going to use this. So they're showing me somebody in the kitchen who is cooking something and they're missing an ingredient. And instead of saying, well, I guess we're just not going to eat they're going to go to the cabinet, go to the refrigerator and find another ingredient or ingredients that they can use instead. Maybe they changed the dish and it ends up one, they're practicing being creative Two, they're utilizing what they're, they already have instead of spending more money and wasting time going to the store. And it ends up being a better dish in the long run. And it has all of this great energy in it. So staying in the, the mind frame that things happen for a reason, not that they're happening to punish you. Um, 
So just, you know, when you have, when you start to feel disappointed or negative about something not going exactly the way you expected it to, to stay in the mind frame of the Queen of Pentacles. And that is going to be the key, the key to you creating what you want, you manifesting what you want. It's going to flow, you see this river here, flow more opportunities to you. And before you know it, you'll be growing your resources and your finances. And, you know, I love that it shows it on a tree. That it shows these pentacles growing on a tree because we know it took some time for that tree to grow. It doesn't happen just overnight. And remember to balance the energies of give and take. So whatever that means for you, if somebody offers you something, say thank you and take it. Um, don't, don't turn it down and feel unworthy because you're perpetuating um, not you're perpetuating or creating a lack when you do that. If it helps you to reframe the situation, if somebody offers you something and you say no, that person feels rejected. Where if you say thank you and you're genuinely appreciative, then the energy that happens between the two of you is very positive. That person feels like they helped someone and you feel like the universe sent you something because the universe isn't going to drop a golden coin in your lap. It's going to utilize people and opportunities to bring you what you need. So when it comes to you, say yes, say thank you. And um, be generous yourself. Make sure that there is an even exchange of energy. Uh, very, very nice. All right, so pile number one, awaken your inner shaman, heal this, this perception, and um, this idea of feeling trapped, it's just an illusion. Um, and you can shift it by embodying the energy of the Queen of Pentacles. And the more you do that, not only are you healing yourself, but you're going to be healing others as well. Love your message, pile number one. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You chose this feather and your ancestors uh, definitely appear to you in the form of birds. They leave you feathers uh, to remind you that they are there supporting you. Uh, I'm hearing the wind beneath your wings and they speak to you through the wind. Uh, there is something that's happening through the wind. If you stand outside when there's a breeze or when there's wind, you will feel their presence and they are clearing your energy. It's like a, a, a wind shower, just like you can clean your aura when you take a, a, a regular shower in your bathtub or shower, you can clean your energy by allowing the wind to clear it. And uh, your ancestors want you to know that they do that for you. They help to facilitate that. And they also send you messages in the form of your thoughts. So you may not even realize that you're receiving messages from your ancestors because it just comes in as a thought. I'm definitely picking up a, a very kind of grandmother uh, type fig, uh, energy. Um, and, and it could be your grandmother, but this feels older, like a, 
a great, 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 great grandmother, somebody that maybe you never met, um, but it feels like a grandmother energy, very um, wise and nurturing and kind, uh, very gentle. Um, yeah, definitely feel that. If you feel like you have that female ancestor presence with you, please let me know. Let me know if you're picking up feathers too. And we have enjoy music, instruments, sound, tone. So again, there's something about the wind carrying messages to you. I'm also hearing that it's uh, like a feeling. You'll just get this feeling when you're standing outside and you hear the rustling of the leaves uh, in the trees. Your ancestors are there with you. They are around you. And there's something about music. Sometimes they um, communicate to you through um, certain songs. It might be the lyrics of the song or uh, the key that the song is in. Sometimes it's a drum beat. And there's also a message about your voice, your song, your tone, and you being aware of tone, your own tone and others' tones. So they want you to be able to discern between what is said, what's intended, and the tone. Sometimes people say something, their intentions are good or neutral, but because of the way that they said it or the tone that they use, it can be interpreted as um, malevolent or negative because the tone may sound harsh or angry. And so they're, they're asking you to become aware of that and be able to discern that. To reflect on that, both in, in yourself and in others. So if you notice other people getting um, emotionally activated when you say something, just notice how you're saying it. How are you phrasing it? What's the tone that you're using? And vice versa. If you feel you're getting emotionally activated by what somebody says, notice the tone that they're, they're using and see if you can discern their intention from the tone. And this is a skill that they want you to develop. They're telling me that you have a highly sensitive sense of, um, it's like hearing, but it's, it's, it's deeper than that. It is a, a vibrational sense. You sense vibrations. And so they want you to sense the vibrations of somebody's intentions versus their tone. And, and to notice when their intentions are in alignment with their tone and when they're out of alignment. This is gonna help you to navigate situations. Wow, very interesting. And of course, music, dance, sing, um, play instruments, use music as a means to lift your spirits, to um, heal, all of that kind of stuff. All right, let's get some 
oracle cards. I do list all the oracle cards that I use in the description box below. And if I have a link where you can find them, I'll list that as well. All right. What message does pile number two's ancestors have for them at this time? All right, a bear. And look at that. He's got a paw on a mallet, a drum mallet. I told you that drums were also part of it. Percussion, drum beats. It's like the heartbeat. And we see a crown here. What's interesting is I dreamt about a bear last night, a really big bear. Some of you may feel connected to a bear. Um, you may have ancestors that were part of a bear clan or in a previous life, you were part of a bear clan. So you have this connection to bear, but I'm also hearing um, that it's about the stars. See the stars here? You see, uh, we call this the uh, Big Dipper, but it's also called Ursa Major. It's connected to the bear. So it's it could be ancestors from this star system. Okay, wow, very interesting. Let's get some more oracle cards. Okay, I had to pause just a second so I could sneeze. And what your ancestors told me is that they want you to focus on your breath and um, using breath to clean yourself, clean your energy, to visualize exhaling what no longer serves you, what's not uh, what you've already used or what's um, like waste, I guess, but through the breath, releasing anything that's toxic or just no longer serves you and inhaling what you need, what you want, energies that are beneficial for you, energies that are for your highest and best good. They really want you to focus on your breath and to practice different breathing techniques. This is going to do something to your energy body and your emotional body. All right. Wow. Thank you. Druid, hold this space. I feel like this card has been coming out a lot lately. Hold this space. All right, let's, let's, uh, they're actually pointing me to these feathers, which we have the feather here. So again, yeah, there's something about air and being open to receiving uh, communication from your ancestors. Again, you, you may not even realize that you're receiving it because it just seems like one of your thoughts, but they are talking to you. All right, let's get one of these cards. The Courageous Peony. Multifaceted, unique nature, let yourself be seen. And let me let you see this card. All right, be courage courageous like a bear. There aren't any predators for the bear. They're uh, at the, the top of the food chain, so to speak, although they're more herbivores. They, while they can eat and hunt, um, they do eat a lot of vegetation or small things 
for some reason, they're taking me back to the bear and how bear, we know, you know, it seems like a cartoon that bear like honey, but they do like honey, but they also eat the, um, the pupa of the honeybees that are inside the honeycomb. So they'll eat that honeycomb and they're getting protein and sugar in that. So there's something about that. There's something that you're consuming. I don't think that it's a physical consumption. It's more like an energetic consumption. All right, we'll see if we get more information on that as we draw some tarot cards for you. Oh, I think what it is, is when you are around people, you are, you may be absorbing some of their energy. So again, they want you to clear your energy on a regular basis. This is where the breathing is coming in. They want you to um, practice these breathing techniques that are going to clear out any kind of energies that you may have uh, absorbed or that may have kind of attached to you when you interact with other people. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that message. All right, we have the Ten of Pentacles. Very nice. This is living the good life. Happy home, happy family, happy career. Being grounded. Seven of Cups, choices, making the right choice, um, sometimes getting more than what you bargained for. So weighing your options, taking time to make the right choice. The Knight of Wands, all right, very energetic. very passionate, uh, very much fiery energy, creative energy. The sun, all right. This is success. This is, oh, and another horse. All right, you may be drawn to pile. If you were drawn to pile number one, there might be a message for you there. But you see this red thread that this crow is holding. There's something about you traveling. See how he's riding on this horse's back? There's something about you traveling. Um, I've mentioned ley lines before, uh, but something about energetic lines and even you laying down strings or ropes or even drawing a straight line with chalk. Um, this may also be a way that you are separating yourself from other people's energies is creating these energetic lines around you. So using your mind, that's part of what this holding the space is to protect you from absorbing, absorbing others energy, creating this shield around you. Really interesting or Having something at home. Um, okay, they're asking me to show you something, so I'm going to show you. Give me one thing that I do as I read is um, you don't ever see this because it's off camera. Is I have selenite, 
And so you can create um, a grid by lining the selenite up in 90 degree angles so that this one lines up with this one. And then you would have one up here that lines up with this one and you'd have one over here that lines up with this one and the one at the bottom so that you, it doesn't have to be a perfect square, it could be a rectangle, but they point at each other. And you can use your crystals. I like selenite. It's very high vibrational, very cleansing. You can use your crystals in that way. You can use salt, um, but you want these straight lines. They're showing me you in these straight lines, sitting in a space with straight lines to like clear your energy, to reset your energy. Wow, I love that. Very precise message. Thank you. Okay, let's get some more tarot. The Three of Pentacles. Yeah, this also came out in pile number one. So again, if you were drawn to that, this is working with others. So collaborating with others to achieve more. Making your work easier by working with others. And for you, perhaps it is, as you reset your energy, calling in your ancestors, your guides, your guardian angels to help clear your energy. The Queen of Swords. All right, this goes back to you discerning the truth. I talked about this uh, with the feather and this enjoy the music um, card, you discerning what people mean versus how they sound, their tone, the way they say it or the way they phrase it. So you're really being encouraged to embody this type of wisdom. We see here the sword of truth. And there's something about you speaking your truth with this courageous peony. Hearing the truth and speaking your truth. They really want to stress the importance of your words what you say and what you allow in and not allowing other people to influence your truth. That's the consumption. Remember I mentioned there's something you're consuming. So this could come in the form of media like the news and it can also come through what other people say. So there's something that other people may say, and it may actually be true for them. It may be their truth. Reality is a fluid substance. There is not one consistent version for everyone. We really are on this unique journey. And while there may be some grains of um, information that are usable for you. Not everything that everyone says is 100% truthful for you. It's like when you eat food, even if it's healthy food, you're not, your body's not going to use all of it. Your body is going to digest it. It's going to retain just what it needs. And then the, what the rest will come out as waste. So you're being invited by your ancestors to do the same with what you read and what you hear through media and through people, uh, discern what resonates with you and what doesn't resonate with you for your highest and best good 
uh, maybe even for the highest and best good of the planet. Wow, I love this message, pile number two. All right, the High Priestess. Okay, yes. So the High Priestess, again, is that sacred truth. She is connected to the spiritual realm the Akashic Records, the subconscious mind. So there is some sacred truth that you're meant to discern. Wow, I love that. It's like embody the queen of the swords and you're going to become the high priestess. And the high priestess is, you know, also going to use that information for the highest and best good, that sacred truth. Really, really powerful pile number two. Really powerful. And I love that you have the sun. So some ley lines, creating lines, creating energy grids, clearing your space, using your voice to express what you want, listening to the wind, using the wind to clean your energy, being brave and courageous, discerning the truth, and discerning, thinking about when you say something, Set your energy, hold the space within your, uh, hold the energy within your space, your temple, your physical being. Think about before you go into a meeting or before you have a conversation, what is, what is it that you ultimately want? What's your highest and best good? Picture it that way. Hold that space. Come from that place, from your heart and lead with that and things will unfold in a a higher vibrational way. You'll begin to hear how you say things and share things um, opening up pathways for you. Wow absolutely amazing thank you ancestors please let me know how this resonates the light in me sees the light in you thank you bye hello pile number three welcome to your reading you chose this shell and you know shells by ancient the earliest humans these were the first cups and bowls. It was a way to scoop things, scoop water and drink. You know, we used our hands, we used big shells, shells bigger than this. And these were ways to um, scoop things, mix things. So we see here somebody painting on the wall. They may have used a shell to mix the pigments with the animal fat, spit, whatever they were using to uh, create their paint. And what your ancestors want you to know is that you are a descendant of these original artists, these recorders. And in these ancient times, um, the artists were not painting pictures to decorate. They were painting pictures to create. Uh, it was part of a ritual to create, uh, to manifest, to, uh, to ensure that they could hunt more. It was also a way to record information, um, tell stories, 
but many of the times when they were drawing these pictures, it was a, a spiritual experience. And so that's, that's what you are the descendant of. And for some of you, that's who you were in a past life. I'm even hearing that some of you ha were um, your own ancestor. You're, you are being born within the same bloodline from thousands of years ago. Wow, that is really, really interesting and fascinating, pile number three. All right, you are creative and they want you to use your creative powers to create, to visualize, to paint, to record, to sing, to dance. Um, you are meant to do something physical with the intention of your uh, intangible desires. Um, those things you desire that haven't been realized in the 3D yet to couple it with pictures. So draw pictures. doesn't matter if it's a work of art. It can be an outline, a stick figure. Draw pictures of what it is that you want. Draw pictures of you experiencing the life that you want to experience. Sing about it. Dance thinking about it. Um, engage your body, your senses, physical movements. Um, that's going to help to integrate these desires, these ideas that you have. And some of you are channeling these divine energies and the way that you're helping to um, anchor it to the earth for others is by by drawing things, by photographing things, by writing things down. Even if you don't publish it, just the act of writing it down, it's like you're capturing an energy or a concept out of the air, out of the collective consciousness, the ethereal, the spirit world. And as you write it, you're channeling it and you're pinning it down, you're anchoring it, integrating it into the 3D. Wow, you're so powerful, pile number three. Amazing. Let's get some oracle cards and see what other information your ancestors have for you today. I do put all the cards that I use in the description box below, and if I have a link where you can find them, I'll include that as well. So what messages does... Pile number three's ancestors have. Ooh, frog. Yeah. Transformation. Fertility. Prosperity. Abundance. Let's get some more. Night. Be brave and honest. Night. I'm also hearing night, like night time. Many times the frogs come out at night. You'll hear them croaking. So you may um, you may do some rituals or spells at night. And again, using your voice, singing, dancing. Listening to the sounds of nature and incorporating that into your rituals, into your spells. So for example, if you want to increase your prosperity, your abundance, uh, go outside when you hear the frogs singing their song and do your spells then. Write down your goals, your affirmations, draw pictures, um, dance, do your spells, your rituals, your meditations, your prayers when you hear the frogs singing. Wow, love that. Thank you ancestors for that message. All right. 
activated earth, power places, ley lines, trust where you're led. Oof, love that. All right, we talked about ley lines in, in uh, pile number two, but also in another reading, uh, maybe a few days ago. So if you happen to hear that reading and now you're coming to this reading and hearing it, please let me know in the comments and please take this uh, message as confirmation that that message is meant for you. Definitely. Um, there's something about you traveling along these ley lines and going to these sacred spaces. Some of them are man-made um, or there are man-made structures over these energy vortexes. And some of them are they're vortexes, but what you'll find there isn't a man-made structure, but instead um, a, a natural landscape feature like a mound, a natural mound or a mountain or a river, um, something there. So definitely heed the call of traveling to these places especially where there's water is what they're telling me we did start with a shell and then we have frogs so definitely um and we see water in this picture as well yeah all right let's get some tarot the moon all right something is going to be revealed. The moon is our subconscious mind. Yeah, there's something in your subconscious that you're bringing out, you're bringing forward. The seven of pentacles. All right. Growing your finances. You know, it takes time, but you can do it. And notice how this frog has one foot in the water and one foot on land. And frogs start in the water. They, the eggs are, are you know, um, laid in the water and then they become tadpoles and young frogs and then when they're adults they're ready to go out on land and they go back and forth and so there's something about that about your inner world and your outer world your again what you your ancestors really want you to take your dreams take your desires from your subconscious mind do something with it physically. Draw a picture, record it, write it down, make a vision board, and you're going to begin to grow your money that way, your resources, and you're, you're grounding it into the 3D. You're anchoring it into the 3D. Wow, okay. Thank you, ancestors. What other? Whew, okay. Get these we have the five of pentacles oh the six of pentacles sorry the six of pentacles is um balancing the energies so these three cards came out in pile number one. If you were drawn to pile number one, you may want to listen to that if you were drawn to it. So yeah, there's something about balancing the energies. And they're really showing me these two birds down here. So we see this bird has his head down and he's picking up a little fish. This bird has his head up and he's reaching for this big fish. 
So there's something about um, not competing over small things and reaching for that big fish. But also the Six of Pentacles is about even exchange, about receiving and giving equally. So that means, you know, that if somebody offers you something, you take it and you say thank you. You give them back energy, at least in the form of appreciation, heartfelt, genuine appreciation. And the more you do that, the more you will receive. But there's something about the way they're on this. It's like a seesaw almost. And because his head's up, he's able to, he's further on the branch that's teetering on this rock. So the way the leverage is, it's lifting him up to reach this. And he's at the end of it. So he's being lowered down, reaching for this little thing. So there's something about raising your vibration through lifting others up um, and not through not trying to gain things through competition, but even exchange. Really interesting. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, ancestors. Okay, Knight of Cups. This is an offering. Uh, and when I say offering, like somebody offering you something, a proposal, it even looks like a, like a letter here. So you may receive some form of communication through an email, through an envelope, through a text, uh, somebody offering you something. And this is good. Cups are, the Knight of Cups is, um, you know, cups are emotions, fulfillment, being fulfilled. And we see all these fish. So this could be a very prosperous thing. Also, the Knight of Cups is uh, sometimes traveling over water. Remember I talked about you visiting someplace that has high energy that especially if it's connected to water, like a river or uh, even the ocean. Okay, wow, thank you. Two of Swords. So this is, maybe it's Two of Wands. It's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? I said two of swords because of the way that it's crossed, but I see the earth up here, which reminds me of the two of wands. So perhaps it is the two of wands, which is expansion. Yeah, because we see this looks, see how it's blue down here, like water. Again, that water. So we started out with the shell. There's definitely something about water and expansion, broadening your horizons, um, getting out into the world. Okay, really interesting. And the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups is a celebration. So yeah, I see this Knight of Cups as somebody offering you something and you're going to expand um, your energy by celebrating this remember every time even if somebody says let me carry that for you sure thank you appreciate it instead of no i got it uh, be conscientious of the message that you're sending the universe when you do this. Celebrate when people help you. At the end of the day, when you're lying in bed, uh, go over how many people were just kind to me today and helped me. What gifts did the universe send me? Maybe you found a, a quarter, you know, a dollar on the ground. Um, 
notice any gift that the universe sends you, whether it's in the form of a resource, an opportunity, a help from a, another person, a compliment. If somebody compliments you, thank you. Do not uh, try to deflect the compliment. Like somebody says, I like your shirt. Don't say, oh, this is an old shirt. It has a tear in it. Just say, thank you. That's it. Say thank you and smile. The more that you do that, it's going to expand. It's going to multiply. Wow. Absolutely love your message. And the four of wands. Yes. So these definitely are wands because... I recognize the Four of Wands and they look the same. The Four of Wands is another celebration. Some of you may even be offered a job or maybe uh, receive a marriage proposal. Um, but again, I think for many of you, this is uh, noticing when the universe gives you something gifts you something and the four of wands is also stability so your ancestors want you to know that through uh, appreciation and gratitude through this attitude of gratitude you're going to create stability for yourself love that wow pile number three what an awesome message Please come back to this reading if you do end up traveling across water or if you interpret the water in some way in this message. I mean, we even see a fountain here. That's amazing. The Four of Wands doesn't usually have a fountain, but we have a fountain here. So there's this outpour of love, appreciation, Fulfillment, contentment, good feelings, good vibes with all of these cups and water references in your reading, pile number three. Wow, amazing. Thank you, ancestors, for a wonderful, magical reading. And thank you, pile number three. The light in me sees the light in you. Bye.